My Jai Wyatt, how's it going, mate? It's good. Good to see you, little bro. Thanks for doing this. Hey, my pleasure. It's, it's long overdue. So listen, Mike, I'm going to get straight into it. Yes. Uh, can you just tell the audience what your martial arts background is? Okay, well, my martial arts background, I started with... I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot, but we've got about... Yeah, yeah, I don't, want to get, I don't want to get bored. <laughs> I don't want to bore everybody. But uh, interestingly enough, it was, it was Japanese jiu-jitsu that I started with. Then yeah. in Shotokan, uh, Kyokushin, Goju, Taekwondo, Tangsudo. Uh, then I got into the weapon system, Kobudo. Then totally like um, trained with uh, with Eric Chen, with Wu Shu, and everything. So there's a bunch of different stuff. Let me rephrase the question: Is there any martial art that you haven't practiced? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say your main martial art is? It's got to be Kyokushin. That's 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 where my heart is. Uh, not because of the beauty of it, but, but what it pulls out of you. I always compare it to like, I always say it's like the Navy SEALs of martial arts because, um, when you're tested, when you really want to, you know, if something tests you to where you feel, feel like, no, this is not worth it. I want to quit. It, 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 it really develops something from your character. Right. Yeah. And that's something that like, if you develop that, uh, you know, walking through the, <laughs> the fire type of thing that helps your life so much because there's nothing that you can't overcome. So that's why I love it so much because it keeps testing you. And that's why I still, I still test in that system because it's still hard as hell. You know, like a yeah. couple of October's ago, I tested again. I saw my this yeah, you a little video. You were somewhere and you were taking your what down, which down was it? Yeah. I was, you know, it was like a third and fourth down test. Yeah. But it's like, it doesn't care that I'm an actor or famous or whatever. <laughs> Actually, it was rougher on me. We were training like eight hours a day. You only got a little, it's like, like hard military training. And you got just a little bit of time to get food. And then you're, you know, you're running up mountains. You're doing all kinds of stuff. But like, we would finish working out. And then people wanted to take pictures with me. And I'm like the last one leaving the training area. Yeah. Now I got less time to eat. <laughs> we got to get back. I'm tired. Like, not, Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, you couldn't do I don't that. I come across as an asshole. Yeah, because you know, there's people from Russia, you know, you know, Brazil, all of, and Where you did know, you do this? What country did you do this in? Well, I did it in, in Canada, in Banff. All right. Man, did I feel like, damn, this ain't worth it. <laughs> like, you know, some, you know, you have like the fight like all day, something like a 30 man and people are trying to knock your ass out. And and so, to, be honest, to be honest, I mean, I know we're all martial artists and everything, and you would, would, you'd want to think that this isn't the case, but I suppose a little bit, you may have a little bit of a bullseye on your back because you've done these martial arts films. Oh, it's Michael Jai White. I, 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 I want to see how I do with him. Yeah, so, it, it, you know, so I can say, woe is me, it's rougher on me and all that, but that's all a part of it. You know what I mean? Instead of, like, but that's the thing that it, te it taught me. It's like, because I wanted to make excuses several times. Like, this ain't fair. But that's, life ain't fair. You know what I mean? That's my that trailer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's my Winnebago? But, but, but see, that, but, that's great, but that's great for me. I probably benefited better than anybody because I had to be better, you know? And I had to not complain, even though it was, I was like basically by myself. And I was the dancing panda because every now and then, like we were trying to eat and people want to take pictures. You know what I'm gonna? What am I gonna do? But guess what? I pay for this. So shut up, Mike. That's what you get. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what you get for being, you know, the, the the movie guy. So that's that's the thing in life. That's why I love it so much because, hey man, it teaches you that life ain't fair. Like you roll with it. You, I can overcome that. You know what I mean? But but there's a part of me that wanted to say, man, this ain't fair. But then it's like, shut the hell up and get yeah. it done. You know? So I'm better by going through it. That's what, that's the thing that I feel like a lot of people lost in martial arts. It's physically taxing, isn't it? It's physically very hard, but yeah, you know, we know that that that's a mental game. People just, yeah, but, but just like, physically just difficult. Like, How do you do that? Well, you know, it's here, isn't it? And that is what sets you up for life when you can get strong here. Yeah. And, and, and so you apply that to like, look at you, I mean, you are a martial art, like the, the, how hard you have to work through your 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 movies people have no idea you make it look easy 
this is a trip, right? You make it look easy, but it ain't easy. That's the, that's the beauty of it. But you're like the fight scenes that you have to go through, the, yeah. the, uh, you know, and I go, man, because when I saw Avengement, I'm like, shit, that, that's my favorite Scott Atkins thing. What you did on that, like, it's like, I was like, because I know the behind the scenes. It might not be fourth down training tough, but it's it's still tough. No, no, it, it, no, it's 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 tough because I really think there's times on set that I've had to really dig down. I mean, I had to do this fight with um Josh Barnett uh, in Never Back Down Three. Yeah. It was 120 degrees, and and I changed this uh, this uh, I found a warehouse that was just abandoned. It was like garbage and rat poop all over the place. We changed it and made it into the gym. We didn't have air conditioning in that damn thing. And even if we did, well, hell, you can't use it while you're shooting. So under hot lights, I'm fighting against a guy, you know, UFC champion, strike force everywhere champion. We're going full blast. And I'm under these hot ass lights and it's already 120 degrees. It was the opposite in Bulgaria on Undisputed too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when we were up in Fratza? Yes, in that freezing cold studio, but we're supposed to be sweaty, and they're, they're spraying cold water on us. And we're both oh, my God. Cold anyway. um, yeah, that's, the, that's the coldest I've ever been in my life. Is oh, it must be you, because you were doing it all in the snow and all those acting yeah, scenes man. in the snow. Yeah, but, you know, but that's the thing, man. It's like, it's worth it, you know, when, well, when you, we get, You never uh, know when it's going to creep up and get you because the last film I did was Debt Collectors and I was in Los Angeles, in the Valley. Yeah. It was August going into September. Mm. And it kind of creeps up on you over there. I mean, obviously it's really hot, but I feel like mm. I've filmed in hotter places. But before I knew it, I was suffering from dehydration. Yeah. Uh, I had to be took back to my trailer. We had to stop filming the fight scene with the Lewis Mandalore. And they got someone to come and uh, put me on a drip and I had two bags of saline put into me. And, you know, as soon as I had that in me, it was back out on set. Let, come on, we've got to finish the fight. But I was yeah. in a bad way. But, you know, you've got to get back it done. Down free, same thing happening. I, I got deathly ill. Forget it. Like, I, like just like the, the scene with Josh Barnett, he's done. He's wiped out. Guess what? I'm the director. I got to stay. I gotta <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I I got your brain's so, not working. What's the yeah. shit? I got so sick. I had to go be rushed to the hospital. They put IVs on me in my room. I would I would basically be wheeled out and just go, can't put the camera there. Whatever. <laughs> Dude, the fight scene, I, I man, this this makes me think about like putting the, the uh the outtakes out of this. When I had to fight um, uh, uh, Nate, Nate, Nate Jones, yeah, I was so sick that before I would just uh, do the take, and right after the cut, I just would just be out of it. So when I saw the actual stuff, I didn't remember shooting it because oh. I was out. I, I was out. There's a time where I'm walking down this hallway. Were you happy with what you shot? I was, yeah, I was surprised. I guess I mustered up the energy that you couldn't tell. But there was a whole day where I couldn't, I don't remember anything. And I was like, well, I, I, have this, I have this thing that I always say, and it sums it up for me. I always say to people, it seemed like a good idea when I was 12. <laughs> you know, when I was watching yeah. Bloodsport and I said, Mommy, <laughs> I want to be this. I want to be an action star. This seemed like yeah. a good idea back then, but yeah, it's yeah. tough, man. It's hard. But yeah, man, because now we do, like, you know, we can't compare ourselves with Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan and, and Donnie Yen, man, they could shoot a, they could shoot a fight scene, and take a whole week to shoot a fight scene. Now the audience doesn't know the difference. No. Now we have to do that same, like, a fight scene of that length. We have to do that in a matter of four hours, four to six hours sometimes. Yeah, they well, have luxury in Hong Kong, China, where, to be honest, if you're feeling a bit stiff on day three, just mm -hmm. take it easy on day three. We'll pick it up on day four because we've got five, yeah. six, seven, and eight. Yeah, but you know, there's no disclaimer. We can't explain that to our audience. But we have to 
we have to make up the difference on a very short period of time. So, I mean, I don't, you know, you, I mean, I was jealous, man. <laughs> you, you were telling me about, you, you know, when you're shooting with Donnie and just like. Seven days for our end fight in it, man, four. Oh my I wanted, God. I wanted to go longer, actually. I wanted to go longer because I figured, well, I'm here, I'm doing it. It's Yon with Ping, Donnie Yen. Come on, let's make it a good one. That's one of, that's one of those things, man. But we, we have to suck it up and go, okay, there's no excuses here. We still have to, yeah. we, you know, it just makes us better. We have to do what the audience is, expects on a very short and limited time period. And most of the time, even the director doesn't understand what the hell's going on. Let, let me ask you this then. Let me ask yeah. you this. If you're making a movie um, with a director that maybe you've not worked with before and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's not a fully fledged action movie, but there's some action in it and you're required yeah. to do it. And so you start doing the action and it becomes clear to you that maybe the director's never shot an action scene before and he doesn't necessarily understand how to do it the way that you know how to do it because you've done so many action films. Right. Will you at that point say, listen, I think I need to take over here? Or will you be a bit more... Yeah, I've, I've had mental? to. I've had to because they don't understand the language and they don't... Yeah. You know, most people are not going to admit that they don't... that they're limited in mm -hmm. some, some place, especially if they're the director. Yeah. But since, you know, I, I've never been known as an asshole, I always can understand somebody else's perspective. Now is a point where I'm going to pull, I'm, I'm going to use my asshole card for that. Yeah. I'm going to have to say, put my foot down and say, well, look. Because the expectation is there that you have to deliver with the action, the audience. Yeah, there's so many things that we've done where I know myself, like where the previs look better than the actual movie itself. Yeah, and the previous for people who don't know is like we will shoot it on a on a you know a camera phone or whatever just to show how the scene moves, and so hopefully the director can understand that that's the way this should be shot, and because we design it for these shots, so uh, a lot of directors think that you know they, they they don't understand. There's a language that we've learned of choreography and filming that the whole action world understands. And, uh, and that's what you want to go by. And if they're smart, they will listen and go by that. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to be the asshole on set arguing. Yeah. And I've been in that place before where mm -hmm. I've had to be the asshole because, you know, I know it, for me, it's my, uh, the way I've always looked at it is, I'm known for my action. I have to yeah. make sure that that is as good as it can possibly be. Yes, I exactly. hope the action's great and the story, but the action, it has to be good. And if okay. you're gonna make, if you're making it that the action is not looking up to my standards, I have to get in there and make sure. But now I've learned to have that conversation at the beginning, before Bro, we shoot the movie. You know, doesn't it break your heart? Uh, you, you, we've seen some of the best action guys in the world be used completely wrong okay we've seen hollywood try to do the thing that uh you know jet lee luckily had you know had the right people yeah choreographers and and shooting whatever when he when he came in with um with uh, uh lethal weapon yeah they've tried to emulate this with tony ja and eco terribly like, remember when they were trying to do, uh, what was it? Uh, there was a, you know, Romeo Must Die, and there was a few, a few other things where they would shoot a downward angle on, on Jet Li, making him look smaller, and they cut up his, they don't understand. His movement is amazing. You don't cut away from that. You don't, you don't yeah. treat him like, like somebody who doesn't know how to do it. It's just, you got to do the Fred Astaire thing. You shoot the beauty of him moving, like Bruce Lee. Like nobody moves like that. But they took Eco in um in what mile twenty two? Yeah, they shaky cammed him up. Oh my God! I'm like, wait a minute! You got one of the best choreographers and movers on the planet. Well, Eco's and you, such a nice guy. Eco, because we work with him, he's yeah. so nice, and he will do whoever you know whatever you want. But really, he needs to stick yeah. his foot down and say no. This is not the yeah. way to do it. You've cut out Fred Astaire, basically, the, <laughs> and you've, you've, you've 
cut, you cut to his feet and you cut to all, yeah. you, you've chopped it all up. And then, and then what do you got? It's like they, but they will never understand. They, and then they, then they blame poor Eco or, or, or Tony for the, the movie not, not, yeah. you know, kind of working. Brett Ratner, he was, he, he had it right. Cause obviously Jackie Chan came over and he did Cannibal Run, he did The Protector. And yes. they didn't shoot it the way that he would shoot it himself. And right. you know, he, he played the Hollywood game and, okay, I'll do it your guys' way. It's the wrong way. And, it, and he, he didn't take off. But Brett Ratner with Rush Hour, he said, uh -huh. Jackie, the fights, they're yours. Bring your team. You shoot the action. That's I'm right. Everything else. And, you know. See, that, that's just smart because, like, he knows that he can't do that. That is an art form. Yeah, that's why I did movies in China. I went, I went there as for, for learning, you know what I mean? I wanted to know yeah. how they, you know, how they, and you know, I know you yourself. I mean, Jackie is a master at this. We have to learn how to kind of bridge the gap, even though we have a lot less time and money to shoot the thing. Now, now I get to a point where it's like, there's a camera that shouldn't be there. I'm like, no, shut that camera down yeah. because someone uses it. Because you don't want that footage in, in with the editor because an editor, likes, for the most part, likes to edit yes, those yeah. camera angles in even when they don't really need to be there. And not everyone yeah. does, but, you know. Like, I think about it. I, I try to explain it, and, and I try not to talk down, but when I explain just a simple edit, and we think about what is the most, uh, like, think about Indiana Jones, right? What are the most iconic uh, moments in that whole movie? is when the guy brings out the scimitar and he's got this sword, the big guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in the same shot, Harrison Ford turns, shoots the guy, and then goes on about his business, yeah, right? Beautiful. It's beautiful. If you cut to a close shot of that guy getting shot, it's not the same moment at all. Yeah. You know? And I try to explain that to people like, no, we want to, we want him to hear the guy, see him, oh, shoot him in the same shot and move on. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. It was um, Sergio Leone, apparently in the Westerns before him, they would show the, the guy shoot the gun and then they would cut to the guy getting shot. Right. In America, you could never show the gun and the guy getting shot in the same frame because it was considered right. way too violent. But right. he broke that rule because he was in uh, Italy and he didn't know and, and everyone loved it because yes, yes. it's very violent, but it looked fantastic. And it's the same principle for a fight sequence. When mm -hmm. you see me throw the punch in all yeah. its glory and you see the other guy get hit in the same right. shot and it looks like it hit him, that's right. the beauty of the shot. That's what yeah. you want to show. But if you explain it to somebody, like the, the Indiana Jones thing, okay, you say to a director, hey, let's, let's use that shot, right? Our editor is going to go, oh, here's a close shot of the guy getting shot. And a horrible editor would show the bullet wound and then the guy falling in a, in a separate shot. Instead yeah. of, but, but how do you convince him? How, how do you convince him that it's not, he's not right? Because he's going to go, well, yeah, well, to some degree, he's going to be right, right? If you show him getting shot, it yeah. it makes sense, but yeah. it's nowhere near as powerful. It's not as beautiful. It's not as powerful. It's exactly. not as cinematic. Yeah, it's yeah. Perfect. So we gotta we gotta be assholes for our 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 audience, man. You know, I hate to be apologizing, going, "Hey guys, you know, sorry that you know this is not up to par." You know, you know, you can't do that. You can't put a disclaimer out. So you, yeah. so we got to just put our foot down because, hey, damn it, you're hiring us. You're working with us because we've proven we know what we're doing. You know, so exactly. yeah. who's going to be blamed, me or you? It's going to be us, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Well, they'll always blame the guy whose face is on the front cover. Exactly. It's your exactly. fault for everything wrong with the movie. <laughs> exactly. Oh, did you see that Michael Jai White film? <laughs> right. Up to standards. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why the, the, the um, Hong Kong films have worked for so long is there's two directors. People don't realize this. It's two directors. There is the director 
And then there's the action director. When the action is happening, the regular director goes to hell home. You know, and that's why they work. Oh, well, a, a smart director does that mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, like, it's like a big collaboration. So, yeah, Yin Wu Ping. People don't uh, people don't realize that Yin Wu Ping, even though he's gotten uh, credited as to be one of the best directors, they don't realize he was the action director in those movies that became famous. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, um, directed mm -hmm. by Ang Lee, Oscar yes. winning director, incredible. Yeah brilliant director yes. himself uh, said in, a, in an interview um, he tried to tell Master Yong Wu Ping he thought something should be done differently for whatever reason uh -huh. and then he realized that he was wrong and when it comes to action you know Yong Wu Ping he, he, he was the man and yeah, absolutely. how amazing the action is in that film yeah people, like people floating on bamboo trees of course but <laughs> yeah so I'm gonna play you a video next now I found a little surprise. Well, it's not a surprise to you. It was a surprise to me. But tell me about this, Mike. <laughs> That's me and Mills Allen Stewart. That's got to be 90, 92. Yeah, like 92. It was like one of the first things I did when I came to LA. That's a, uh, you know, Boo Boo Stewart? Stewart? I don't know, but that's a good move like, then. Like a Disney, he's like a Disney heartthrob. That's his dad. Mills. I think I worked with him in Deck Collectors. I think he was the guy behind the bar. Yeah, he's a stunt coordinator and he's a good friend. But what's going on here, Mike? <laughs> how, come um, just, how come you're just taking it? Yeah, I, I, you know, this is like... <laughs> Did you forget that you had a, an art to punch him for, for five seconds? Yeah, th this, is, this is like early on where... I, I took this job because I needed rent money. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, I, I barely spoke in this damn thing. This is just like, a, of course, a, a C movie, basically. We've all made the odd C movie. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Man, you, you messed me up with that one because I, I forgot. <laughs> I was... Listen, yeah. when I was a kid, I used to watch all the 90s low-budget martial arts action movies. I used to love them as a kid. Even the bad ones, do you know what I mean? I, I lapped yeah, it up. Yeah. So there's always a place for this stuff. But that, I think I can say, was shockingly bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you dead there or, or not? No, you're just getting back up. Yeah, I get up like with no problem. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, so, that's, I'm supposed to have been like playing possum until, until they start, you know, betting, you know, wow, that was a great edit. <laughs> and just oh the old box full of fluff so that, that's ballistic I'd not seen that before and I know that you did um, so you did the Toxic Avenger was that ballistic because you you looked a lot smaller there you're still built but you, you didn't have the muscle mass that you had obviously later on in, in life so was that before Toxic Avenger or, or after oh that's that's after the Toxic Avenger was in the late 80s. Here's Toxic Avenger, the first thing I've ever done. Now, these are some good nunchuck skills, I've got to say. Let me tell you, I was supposed to be a, a, an extra on that movie. I turned out, just because of opening my mouth and making suggestions, I ended up choreographing all the fight scenes, pr practically. Uh, I did like I was I played a headless dancer. Um, I actually doubled um, Toxic Avenger a few times. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think I was like freaking 19 in this thing. Well, you look bigger here than you than in the ballistic, which is what confused me. You must have yeah, dropped I, a lot of weight. Yeah, I would go up and down in weight. Really, when I came to L.A., I was really trying to, you know, my whole thing was focusing on real acting work. So I'm going out to play, you know, uh, accountants or whatever, but not the bench pressing accountant. I'm trying to, I'm trying to play regular roles. So oh, yeah. I, yeah. I always try to trim down. Even to this day, whenever I work is, is I go lighter. You know, it was, it's, the was same it's the same for me, of course. Yeah, except for when we first 
Well, what I mean is when yeah. I bulked up, obviously, to play Boyka, and the reason yeah. I wanted to bulk up as much as I possibly could was because of you. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, people seeing me as that character, that was the first time most people saw me. And right. you know, fans, they're disappointed when they, they see me not like that. But, of course, I don't just want to play Boyka. I want to play other roles. I want to Absolutely. be the normal actor. Absolutely. You, you, you bulk up, you know, you know, the focus that you had. I watched you just change all of a sudden. Like, you know, you, you, <laughs> one thing that was really funny, because I know, see, one, one trick that we have is like we, we, we pump up before, oh, yeah, before, you know, the, the camera rolls. And there was a few times where you, you'd be doing push ups in the ring, and then I start doing push ups. You're like, Mike, don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't do that. We got to keep the illusion that I'm, I'm closer to your side. Exactly. What was great was when, when I got there and the whole agreement was, listen, I'm trying to get as, as big as I can. Yeah. Because we wanted to look the same height, uh, the same right. weight, as much as was possible. I mean, that was the goal. And yeah. you were shrinking down in weight as the movie yeah. went on. Yeah. I could see you literally getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Yeah, yeah. I was, tr I was trimming down while you were bulking up. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so we would meet in the middle. But the, the thing is, because... Basically, what we did was the uh, Rocky Apollo Creed thing, because that's almost the same ratio. Sylvester Sloan and oh, um, Carl Weathers. Yeah, Carl Weathers. Yeah, Carl Weathers was way bigger, like height wise and, and yeah. width wise. Yeah. They did certain things where, if you the first time you see them, they seem closer to the same size. The illusion is there. Yes, and that's what we did when we, first when impression. you and I met up. And we had you slightly taller. Everybody was convinced. Yeah. And you could, but you had the jacket on. Some people are still convinced. <laughs> yeah. Remember? Oh, the funny thing was, remember when I came to England to that big uh, martial art convention? Oh, yeah. And you were exactly. with me? Yeah. And they were like, oh, man, I loved you in, in, in yeah. Undisputed. And they were. Yeah, that film was great. You, I'm standing right next to you. <laughs> yeah, you're standing right next to me. And they're like, hey, would you take a picture of us? And I'm like, uh, you like that movie, right? I'm like, okay. I said, uh, you just gave the camera to Boyka. And they're like, no. I'm like, no, that's him. <laughs> and they freaked out because you were, you were so night and day because mm -hmm. you're so, such a pleasant, non threatening person in, in, in person. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to insult you, but that's a positive oh, yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But then you, 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 you inhabited this character that people are thinking is damn near like computer generated. The lengths we went to, I had shoes with about this much on, on, the, on the bottom of my foot to give me right, yeah. uh, height. We would dutch the camera sometimes so that right. our heads look level in the ring because obviously we didn't have, um, I didn't have shoes on sometimes. Well, in the ring, we didn't have boots on, but, and then sometimes I'd be on a box. And yeah, uh, you, lean, you gained and you stayed lean. That is the that was the I'm most jungle. important thing because I look I love that picture that we used where I'm I'm profile and you're square like you open up to camera that picture made us look around the same size yeah. because there was my profile you only see the side of my you know side of me and but you see you turn toward you know kind of full frame toward camera and it just is such a great shot because we look similar in, in size. Because it's amazing. It's amazing that we were yeah. able to pull that off, to be honest. And then while we're moving, people already have it in their head that we're the same size. Yeah. So You're yeah, right. People, it was that initial first time when I was even taller than you. Yes. Yeah. People were like, wow, this guy's big. Yeah. And then so to be that size moving around the way you it's did awesome. was otherworldly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people were like, who the hell is that dude, you know? Now, let me ask you something. Yeah. Honestly now, honestly. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you knew that I was going to play Yuri Boyka, which was written in the script as this, you know, sort of Ivan Drago beast yeah. character, what did you think when, the, when Isaac said, okay, we're, we're going to get Scott to play this guy? What was I was all for yeah. it because the, the other... Because the, uh, Dolph had already... They were trying to negotiate it for Dolph. Yeah. 
And I was all for it. I said, no, no, yeah, no. Really? Great. No, no, I was all for it. Are you kidding me? I was so f for you doing it. That's that's where I was you like. You didn't really know anything about me at the time, right? I mean, I maybe did. you could have seen me in special I, I, quarters, but. Dude, I, I, Isaac showed me the, the military thing that you guys had shot. Yeah. You, come on, man. I, I saw all of that. So the way, I said, the way this guy moves, if we can, you know, make, you know, because I knew that there's a, a way where we can shoot it and you couldn't tell the size difference. And that's the that's the thing. The talent, the move, move and, 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 and personally, there was something that really that was on my heart early on. Uh, you know, when I did um, uh, um, the movie with John Claude. Universal um, Soldier. Yeah, Universal Soldier, too. Yeah. My heart was broken a bit. I did a lot that was that John Claude had cut out. Okay. Um, I done. I was happy because I had done the first like that I have seen pure seven twenty on camera. Really? Just not, yeah, just a pure, just yeah. jump, just from from stance, boom, boom, bam, right. And you know, he ended up leaving the other kick and a few other things in. But it was a fight, man. I was like, wait a minute, man. You win at the end of this movie. It makes yeah. you look better. And yeah. so I just remember that kind of thing happening. And I was like, I would never do that to anyone else. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support. I remember how that was to me. And yeah. when I saw, that's why I was like, oh, you know, the, the duck under the, you know, the guyver kick. Absolutely. Yeah. You man. know what I mean? I, I not only that. do everything that I wanted to do. There was never any, any. Issue yes, absolutely. But not only that, but you know, I, but you know what my fight was with, Isaac, Boaz, and everybody, you know what my fight was? They wanted me to be an, a martial artist in the movie. Right. And I'm like, no, no, I fought hard. That I said, no, I, I want to play a boxer who has to be humble and learn a little bit of MMA to overcome this fighter. Yeah. If I'm jumping around doing something similar as a larger guy, where's my, where is my arc as a character? But so I wanted you to be absolutely dominant in that because of the storytelling. This sequence here, I mean, this, this little sequence now, and I'm on the receiving end, but yeah. it's one of my favorite ever sequences. This is great. Mm. You've got to be precise with those punches. Yeah. And I had like blood in my mouth and I was letting bits of blood out at different times and then Boom. You know, trying to get my gum shield to come out at the right time. That was perfect. I mean, you don't, that doesn't happen very often, man. No. And, th and th that was that, that sequence I had, and I was practicing that sequence before we even shot the movie. I know I'd seen something where a, a, a actual boxer Uppercuts the guy, he falls, and he scoots his, his, his feet out uh, at the last oh, yeah. minute. Yeah, so I had those ideas even before we even started shooting. This was the film for me where I blew up, you know, well, I don't know about oh, an overnight success, but after that film came out, I started to see people really appreciating what, what I did in that and believing that that guy was a real guy and, and me not looking like Boyka at all was a little bit odd, but. But, but you know, that's such a blessing because, bruh, if you look like the character all the time, you'd be, you'd be branded with it. For me, it is, it is a bit frustrating because, yes, I'm very proud that as an actor, I succeeded mm -hmm. in creating a character completely different from myself. Right. And that character was very engaging and, mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. But on the flip side, um, you know, still to this day people are almost upset when they see the real me because boyka left such an impression on them right yeah like, man i think you should just be boyka in real life why have you got your hair like that why do you look like that? <laughs> come on shave the sides off get the goatee so may you know but think about if you always look like boyka and then you're trying to play the another character maybe i should have just always played boyka well you 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 have a character that 
all you got to do is put what and, and what what comes with it is a whole lot of you know a lot of uh a fan base with it but i feel yeah, like you I, 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 never, I, I was never in this for the fame or anything like that i was in it because i had a genuine love for it and i had to do it with every, you know in my soul it was there however the character you did in avengement that character i want to see that character again period that yeah. was a badass character you know that's that, a one and done that's the one and done but i yeah, do but, feel like a character actor in many ways yeah because I have had success almost when I get away from myself, I've seemed mm -hmm. to have the most success. Um, right. So it's a strange thing, really, because, you know, obviously we know that there's big movie stars out there that are, that are famous and people want to see them be them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's an interesting um, several sided coin yeah. because I run into that myself to some degree. If, if you line up everything I've done, right, which it's, it's weird to know that I've done more comedy than anything else. It's kind of strange because the fact, the fact is, if you do something exciting, like a uh, kick people in the face, that the, the people, the people want to define you by that. But you have to keep breaking your own mold. The problem with that is that people are used to pigeonholing you. Almost everybody in Hollywood benefits from being pigeonholed because they own that little part that little prime real estate but they're but it kind of makes them have a a shelf life what we can do we can go into we could do comedies we could do dramas we you know we're you know you've you've made your living as an actor as well i make my living doing things that completely has nothing to do with action as well so people you know, like say I'm, you know, doing like, you know, why did I get married? My my task is to make people forget I'm the guy that kicks people in the head sometimes. Yeah. And so I have a certain window of opportunity to make you forget that. And therefore I'm doing, you know, there's this world over here that knows me and there's a world over here that knows me. Hmm. So the benefit is that we get to stay in the, <laughs> we get to stay on the, on the cruise a lot longer than people that you go, okay, that's just what he is. Not to not to say anything disparaging against these people, but like, you know, a lot of the action guys, you don't see them in any other thing. You know, I mean, you know, you're in zero dark 30. You don't see that. We started with, um, to be honest, I don't know, can't, I don't know exactly what your first work was, whether it was a martial arts thing or, or whether it was straight drama. For me, my very first film was a, a Hong Kong martial arts film. And my uh -huh. very next job was a British soap opera. Right. You know, so from the very get-go, I was doing both sides of, you know, the spectrum yeah. of film, filmmaking. Exactly, yeah. So that, that's what we're going to, you know, hopefully, like for me, I always want to fuse those things together. And, you know, my, my goal is even when the action stuff, I wanted to feel closer to reality than anything else. That's personally like where I try to try to go to to fuse those worlds and who who better th to do it than somebody who's in those different worlds that's why i'm doing a lot more directing producing acting yeah. and writing let's have a look at this then mike because mm -hmm. obviously i think this is the second film you directed you directed never back down two and never back down three which is this one mm -hmm. and i love what you do here the way you show how it, the traditional um karate techniques are going to work in this MMA setting. Yeah. Um, and it was a great way directorially to show how you're going to implement uh, the techniques. And that's a nice little move there. Yeah. Again, this is something that I conceived way before the movie was, was done. I mean, I wrote the movie as well, you know, wrote, directed, um, acted in it. So there are certain techniques that be, because I'm a, you know, I train with MMA guys um, and, and I fight. So I pulled out certain techniques that you're going to see in MMA fights all the time that are part of bunkai of traditional forms. Um, bunkai means the practical applications. So since yeah. this movie, 
I've seen several people do this kind of uh, on YouTube, pull out actual things that you see in MMA that relate to, to kata. So as a ambassador for traditional martial arts and f fighting as the, the art form and uh, application, I wanted to fuse these worlds together. These days, people are always in this combative thing of how different we are and drawing sides. Where I'm trying to say, look how 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 similar we are. If we if you look at the similarities, and and respect just respect where people are coming from, you can you can gain a lot. So yeah, people. Oh yeah, traditional martial arts does that work? Yeah, it freaking works. Mm -hmm. Not only does it freaking work in fighting, but it, it works in life, man. You know, as we as we're showing, when you have discipline, that's the that's the cornerstone of anything, any success is discipline. Yeah. And so, yeah, just but everybody always wants to look at the negative right away. Oh, that doesn't look. I mean, yeah, I practice kung fu. Yeah, you can't use that in a fight. But guess what? If I can make my body do that, you know, if I can make my body do what my mind tells it to, if I have that ability, well, if I apply that to fighting, how am I not a better fighter? When, <laughs> when I, can tell my, I can tell myself to, okay, if I want to kick you in your left eyebrow, I can do it because of this mind-muscle connection that I got through doing Kung Fu, do, 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 doing these things where I can move the center of my body, w which has all my power. So yeah, that, that little element that you learn in, uh, in, in, in um, uh, Wing Chun, that when you apply it to actual fighting, you're a better fighter instead of just discarding the whole thing. This is it. And people get into martial arts for different reasons. You've got people that yeah. get into it because they want to fight and whatever. And you get people that get yeah. into it because they want to get fit. And they want to do yeah. something that they enjoy to do. And they don't want to go jogging because they're bored. They want to do some martial arts because it helps them to keep getting through the door of the gym. And then you've got, yeah. you know, you've got your trickers and you've got your, your gymnastic side of it. And you've got, you know, various other things. I respect all of it. It all is like, if there's anything that about martial arts, it's about respect. It's about humility. It's about, you know, that's, isn't that a, that's like, where'd that's that go? the main thing it should teach you. If you've where got the right instructor. Where'd that go? It, it, it drives me crazy. As a martial artist, I, I'm a martial artist not because I can beat up people. Who the hell is interrupting my Kung Fu? So Mike, uh, one of the, the fights that I know that you, you really appreciate is Bruce Lee's Way of the Dragon the fight with Chuck Norris and mm. Mr. Bruce Lee. Why do, you, why do you like that fight so much? What is it about that? Yeah, uh, I, I always say the way of the dragon with uh, Lee versus Norris is the best fight scene ever. I think the best fight scenes tell a story in the fight. Yeah. Well, there's so much honor that goes between those two people that is, it just amps up the whole martial artist quotient. The fact that, you know, Bruce Lee, you know, has to adapt. Something's not working. Now he gets on his toes and he's lighter and faster. Then Chuck Norris has to adapt because now he's going, okay, this guy's getting me because he's lighter, you know, and he tries it, but he's not as good at, <laughs> at it. Yeah. And then he's defeated, but decides that, look, I don't want to go on. I'm going to go out on my shield. Bruce Lee's like, I don't want to do this, man. But as another, you know, honorable martial artist, if, you know, you want to go out like that, you know, I'm conflicted, but, you know, here you go. Uh, I'm honoring you. That being that, that is the most um, narrative that I've ever seen in a fight. On top of, they picked probably the greatest spot to do it. Oh, yeah. The Coliseum. Traditionally. <laughs> the, you know, the, at that place, that's the site of battle, you know, for the world, 
Like, how do you beat that? That that's just it. It just raised everything to such a level that it's like that. That's it's hard to when you look at the whole scope of that fight. It's number one on my list, and nothing could could touch it because of those reasons. What I love about Bruce Lee, and you do this yourself in uh, many of your fight scenes, and but not a lot of people do this. But what's great about Bruce is that he will tell the story during the fight of how he's going to outsmart his opponent. You mm. know, you can see him uh, fainting or showing a move a couple of times, and then you know, Chuck Norris thinks he's going to do the move again, and he does something else, and he, you can see him outsmart his opponent in many of his yeah. fights. And that, that's something that you put into your fight sequences as well. I try to because. To me, it's the easiest way to work. Just like, uh, just like with acting. If somebody responds a certain way, that's going to inform my response to his resp that person's response, right? I yeah. want to respond um, honestly. So there's sometimes with choreographers, they just think choreography first. They're not thinking about character. Yeah. Um, I feel like one of the, some of the greatest fights are be, because of character. Ali versus Frazier. There are two characters. And so if not for the characters, it's not nearly as, as interesting. With our, our fight in, in Undisputed, those are two characters. I had to show in my character being humbled, learning, and uh, and with your character, you want you ultimately want to be the best fighter, and so there is a certain respect that 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 you know we have for even even though that we're on opposite, opposing sides, that makes it far more interesting. And so, you know, us behaving true to the character makes the fight come alive. You know what I mean? Can I just say though, there's a bit in that fight. Yeah. You properly kick him in the face, right? No. It looks like you kick him right in the oh, chin. You're talking about the, the, the spinning you, one? You do a back kick, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it really looked like I kicked him in the face. No. <laughs> it never, really never does. No, you would have you would have known if I kicked him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, thought, I thought it was his double anyway. <laughs> no, no. I never I never kicked him. There, there's a because hey, there accidents a, happen. Yeah, there, accidents there, happen. But, I mean they do. That's 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 the business we're in. We're trying yeah, to unfortunately like, my legs are really long and I had to come from a punch. And so I cheated my because you know, I would just pull my hip in to make sure I'm not hitting him. So I always have to kind of do this because I'm not I'm a little weird. My legs are really long. Yeah, they are. I got a short torso. And so... I remember little... trying to get out of the way of them on accident, man. <laughs> Michael Jai White, thanks so much, mate. Thanks, bro. <laughs>